I just got done talking to Steven at Cafe 1040, and they help equip young adults to go do missions work around the world. And what I really love about them is that they equip people to go into unreached areas that are really difficult to get to. And as Steven describes in the video, um, these are people that have to go and live amongst the local people groups there for a couple of years before they even can start spreading the gospel. And um, it's it just brought to light to me how much of a commitment and a joy it is for um, the people that are going to do the missions work. So anyway, this is a conversation that I think is really enlightening around long-term missions and um, just brings to light a really great organization that's behind it all. So Cafe 1040, this is an interview you're going to want to watch and I'll just let you jump right in. Well, Stephen, it's so great to meet you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to chat with me today about Cafe 1040. I um, got introduced to your organization through MAP International. So thanks to them, we're having this conversation. Um, and I'd just like to start out by asking you to share a little bit about Cafe 1040, how you started your ministry and kind of the mission behind it all. Yeah, that sounds great, I'd love to. Uh, yeah, so Cafe 1040, we got started about 20 years ago. Uh, we were started by as a group of people who, who really truly at the core of it were just um, passionate for Jesus. They uh, had had their lives changed by Jesus Christ um, and were filled with hope and peace and joy and kind of had this core belief that everyone should have the chance at least to uh, choose if they'd want to follow Jesus or not. And so uh, our founder, his name is Chuck, and this was around 20 years ago, like I said, uh, he learned that in our world today, there's somewhere around 3 billion people who live in a place where they have no access to the story of Jesus. Um, they live in places where they're, um, the vast majority of these people, uh, they will probably live their entire lives and never actually hear the good news of Jesus Christ even once. Um, they live in places where most likely there are no Christians, no churches, no missionaries. Um, and that was heartbreaking for Chuck to know that there are people in the world who, uh, it's not that they chose to not follow Jesus, not that they had heard it and said, no thanks, I'm, I'm going to go in this direction, um, didn't even have the choice. And so that, that, that stat really sat with Chuck. Um, but then this, this next stat is really the one that was kind of the spark that started Cafe 1040. And that was at the time, and really still to this day, only about 3% of the Christian missionaries in the world are serving amongst those people. Uh, they're called unreached people groups, 3 billion people living among unreached people groups. Only 3% of missionaries are serving in those places, while 97% of the missionaries serving in places where, where there are already churches and Christians and missionaries. And so that was heartbreaking for Chuck to know that that was... Um, there's so many people that most likely will never get the chance to choose for themselves. And God just put that vision on his heart to, to see that stat change. And so uh, Chuck has had the vision for 20 years now, of raising up this, the, the next generation of missionaries. We work with 18 to 30 year olds uh, to work with this next generation and help them ultimately get to those people, the unreached people groups, to tell them the story of Jesus. Wow, that's incredible. I didn't realize the number was so large and that the number of missionaries, when you think of missionaries, you think all over the world, but there's right. a big portion of them aren't reached. So can you just share quickly, I'm curious, like what regions of the world we're talking about as specific as you can be? Oh, did it freeze a little? And just to address what you said a second ago, for a lot of us, you did freeze just a little bit. All right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, for Go a lot back. of us living here in America, great. For a lot of us living here in America, um, it's hard to fathom that. Right? It's hard to understand. It's not just that people ha aren't following. We have non-Christians around us, right? And lots of people. And you ch some choose to follow Christ and some don't. Um, but we have churches, you know, all over the place. I live in Georgia. Uh, we have churches, you know, on every street corner, it feels like. It's almost hard to fathom there are places where there are none of those, no churches. Many of them don't even have a Bible in their own language. And so there is a part of the world, you might have heard before of a term called the 1040 window. Um, and so if you can imagine the northern parts of Africa, 
and then as you go east um, into Asia, all the way over to East Asia, if you can imagine a rectangle right there, north part of Africa, all the way over through Central and South over to East Asia, um, that part of the world is really where the vast majority of these unreached people groups live. Um, okay. Something like 80 to 90% of the unreached people groups of the world are, are in that specific part of the world. And so, you know, why, why is it? Boy, we could have a long conversation around that. Uh, the unreached are unreached for a reason. They're hard to reach. Um, but that's where most of the people are that don't have access to the story of Jesus. Wow. Okay. So I think you said 18 to 30 year olds is primarily the age group of missionaries that you equip. So can you just share a little bit about how you do equip uh, those young people? And um, I just have to say, I think one of the unique angles that you have is the mentorship and the cultural immersion that you have. So if you could speak on that, that'd be awesome too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yeah. So our heart is to help those 18 and 30 year olds who have a heart for this kind of work and want to share the story of Jesus with people who have never heard it before, um, our heart is to help them get there. Um, And so if you can imagine over on on this side here, those 3 billion people I was talking about, the unreached people groups, and over here are the millions of of young adults, the 18 to 30 year olds who have the ability or the capacity to share the story with those people. Um, there is a giant chasm in between <laughs> those two people. And to get from over here to there is really, really difficult. So many obstacles, so many things to get in the way. Um, even if you think God might be calling you to that work, uh, where do you go and who do you talk to? And how do you decide if you're going to move to Asia and become a missionary? It's really, really hard, especially here in America. And so what we do is we come alongside those young adults and walk through this journey with them of trying to figure it out, helping them find their place in the Great Commission. And so we do a few things that we call it hear, see, and do. So it's a hear, see, and do your role in the Great Commission. So it starts with hearing, learning what what is God's mission in the world? Uh, Where is the, the story of Jesus being told and where is it not? Um, some awareness around what missions looks like. Um, and then to see it with your own eyes, actually to go and live among an unreached people group for a period of time and see uh, this different part of the world. It's amazing what happens when you get outside of your normal culture, the things that you're comfortable with, the place where you live, and get to a place where your eyes are open to things you had no idea were out there. Um, and then finally to do it, to find your role in the Great Commission. And some are, are going to go and be missionaries. Um, a lot of people aren't. They're going to be the ones who are helping the missionaries, praying for them and supporting them. Uh, but our hope is to walk with these young adults through um, each of those steps. And so it starts with the here. We have a stateside team and they're working with young adults all across the country. College campuses churches. Oh, it froze uh, a little we bit. Cafe there we go. Okay, we got it back. We have a, we have a three-month mentorship uh, that takes place inside the 1040 window, the place I was just speaking about, uh, where they go and they live among an unreached people group for three months and learn what it's like to live there, um, learn what it looks like to be a missionary. And we have long-term missionaries who live over there. And so they mentor these young adults through that process. They're walking with them. They're answering their questions. They're addressing their fears. They're able to say, hey, I've, I've been there before. I understand why this, this might be terrifying. Or I understand the struggle you're dealing with right now. Um, let's talk about that. Let's work through that. Um, and then after they've spent time overseas, We just connect you to some of these long-term sending agencies who will help you get there. Um, Some of them might say, I don't think being a long-term missionary is for me, but I still want to be involved. How can I be involved? We say, great, let's talk about what that looks like. Uh, Might be you be someone who's praying for missionaries, uh, maybe supporting them financially, maybe serving on the missions team at your church, whatever it might be. Um, we want to help them find their specific role in the Great Commission. So kind of undergirding all of that is just this vision of us walking alongside, mentoring, coaching, discipling these young adults who want to make a difference in the world, uh, care about Jesus and want people to know him, want to, they've had their lives impacted usually and want to share that story with others. Uh, so we just walk along that journey with them 
helping them find their place in the Great Commission, helping them see how their gifts, talents, and skills can be utilized for the kingdom of God. Wow, that's incredible. And I just have to ask, because I find my mind wandering in this direction. I looked into YWAM a couple of times when I was in college, and I actually have a couple of friends who've done it and um, stayed over there for quite a while. Um, and I'm just curious, how how are you different for someone like me that's not as familiar with this space like how would you explain and help us understand the differences and kind of like where you fit in on that spectrum yeah we know ywam well man so many wonderful people over at ywam um that's a relatively good comparison um okay. ywam is a massive organization with you know they're i think they call the dts a discipleship training school and all over the world um, so they do a lot of great work. Um, I think the, if, if I could speak on, I guess on behalf of Kathy's and Forty, what makes us a little bit different, I think it's the focus. We are laser focused on identifying people who are saying, maybe long-term missions is for me. And then everything we do is built around mentoring those people. And so mentorship, okay. um, I'm sure there's plenty of mentoring that happens at YWAM, but that's really the core of who we are and what we do. Um, we know young adults, uh, we live and breathe young adults. Um, I'm like the old guy on staff at Cafe 1040. Uh, we're, we're a lot of, a lot of young adults on staff as well. Um, and so mentoring people is really the thing I think that sets us apart, makes us a little bit unique um, in the missions world. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Thanks yeah. for explaining that. Of All course, right. So um, could you just dig in a little bit more around like what it's like for in the life of a missionary? Like, what does it look like? How do they raise their funds to do what they do? Like, how do they reach others about Christ? Is there any more tangible pieces, examples you could give? Yeah, of course. So what we're talking about specifically um, I do want to distinguish kind of long-term missionaries versus short-term trips. So we're not talking mm -hmm. short-term trips where you might go for a week yeah. and, um, you know, go evangelize in the streets or, or something like that. Um, the vision that we're talking about here really is, we're, again, we're talking about places where um, there are no churches. You know, a lot of short-term trips, you're going to partner with the church there. Um, there really aren't known Christians or missionaries in these places. And so, yeah, you got to ask yourself the question, how are these people um, how are they going to be reached? You know, we don't speak their language. Uh, you can't just pop in and go for a one-way trip and hope that suddenly all these people are going to have the chance to know Jesus. On um, the long-term vision that we're, we're aiming towards is seeing a, a church and even a, a church planting movement among those people um, from the local people, right? So people who speak the language, the people who live there, the locals, um, that they might be the ones who ultimately are sharing the gospel with the people around them um, and seeing the kind of the, the church multiplying out throughout the people group. But you still ask the question, how's that get started, right? Like if there are no Christians there of the local people, what happens? And, and really what, what I would argue and what we believe is required is a long-term missionary, someone from outside of that people group. Um, if there are Christians inside the people group, great, that's, that's the best place to start. Um, but otherwise, someone from outside that people group going and living among those people long term. Um, and so what does that look like? Oh, man, a lot of stuff. Raising funds is, is difficult. Uh, but what it looks like is going around to your friends and your family and your church and your networks and inviting people to be a part of the work that you're doing, um, support you financially, whether it's $50 a month, $100 a month or, or, or more. Um, once you're funded, then you get on the field and most people, they're going to spend about two years um, just learning the language, learning the people, learning the culture, um, getting established in the community, building relationships with the people there. Our heart is never to come in with this American mindset of we've got it all figured out and we're going to show you the way, like the colonialistic, um, let us fix your problems. That's not, that's not missions. That's not long-term missions. That's not going to have an impact. It's a walking in humility, coming in as learners, um, learning the people that you're ministering to, learning what their heart is, what are the things they care about, um, and then looking for ways to communicate the gospel story in a way they would understand. And so that often takes two to three years of just learning the language and learning the people and being there for a while before you get to the place where you can begin to um, communicate, gosh, what did Jesus say? Uh, what is Jesus all about? What is his story? Um, and ultimately invite people to come follow him and, um, and then begin gathering in churches and becoming disciples of Jesus. Uh, it's, the, it's the big picture vision. 
Wow. That's a long time, two to three years, but it makes sense. I mean, I'm all for that type of approach. The I call it the helping without hurting approach, like the trauma right. center is coined. Okay. Um, and, and it's really a thread that I like to bring through Love Light Story. So I'm really happy to hear you talk about yeah. that, actually. Yeah. Um, it's hard, but, for, a lot of, it's a hard yeah. for a lot of missionaries, honestly, because they get there and they want to go and they want to talk about Jesus, that's why they're there, yeah. right? But if you if you can have that long-term mindset, knowing you're probably going to be there five to 10 years, you're going to be so much more effective if you take the time first to stop, to slow down, to learn their language. You can speak in their tongue, um, communicate yeah. in ways they're going to understand. But it is slow and it takes time. How does that work? Like if they're there for that long, they're just becoming friends. So the people that are already living there, how do they come to welcome them in is there some preface like we're here to work with you and to or is it just like I'm new to the community I'm hanging out um like what type of message is put up front because you're not talking about missionary stuff right away it sounds That's like right. um it's different in every context and so okay. wherever you go there's there's going to be lots of different things you say and the receptivity of the people will look different based on where you are but if I were to, to kind of say some a few general rules um, yeah, the places that we're talking about being left unreached, the places we're talking about going, um, like I said, they're unreached for a reason. Uh, they're hard to get into. And a lot of these places, they're not necessarily open to having Christian missionaries come in and, and share the gospel. So no longer, maybe 20 years ago, and certainly 50 years ago, you could go in and say, hey, I'm, I'm a missionary and I'm here to tell people about Jesus. And they would say, great, come on in. Um, you, you can't do that anymore. Um, we're talking, especially in the Muslim world, um, they're not going to let you into the country, a number of other places as well. Um, and so typically what we're talking about is going in and, and essentially um, having a job. And so you're, you're going to find a way to have some kind of job that's going to bring value to the community, can bring value to the economy. Um, and that's going to be kind of your, your, at least initially, your reason for being there. Um, it's also going to give you a chance to uh, help offset some of the costs you might have to raise for funding, and it's going to give you a chance to meet people. And so um, I've got a number of friends who are living all over the world, and uh, some of them might be um, jewelry makers. Some of them have gone with big businesses if they're in a bigger city. Um, it's a wide spectrum uh, of ways that you can go, but um, just, the, just the idea that you can go and, and say I'm a missionary, that, that's, that's changed. Uh, we're living in a different world now. Um, and so there's got to be some kind of reason for you to be there. Wow, that's incredible. And that, I, that helps me understand how dedicated the missionaries that are going there really have to be, that it's, it's not a flash in the pan type situation. And they're really dedicating their entire, you know, life while they're there to this work. And um, it's a, a sacrifice at the same time. It's a joy, I can imagine. That's right. So um, yeah. that's re that's really helpful in understanding the the mindset and maybe what it would be like to be yeah. someone. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right about the joy part. You know, yeah, it's hard for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I can promise you, if you went and talked to some missionaries on the field, um, yeah, they're hard days. There are a lot of hard days. Uh, missions work is not easy. But if you could, if you would ask them, like, would you do it all over again? They'd probably have some tears starting to come down their eyes as they say, but they'd yeah. say, yeah, because uh, there's nothing more important in this world than knowing Jesus Christ and experiencing um, that, that life transforming um, experience of knowing him. And yeah, it was, it was worth it. There is great joy um, in getting to do this work. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Okay. So now I just have to ask this global pandemic, we've kind of been through this phase now we're opening back up, but how has it affected your work? I mean, you're all over the world. Um, and is it still affecting your programs? Like how is this working with you guys? Yeah, it's affected us for sure. Um, as an organization <laughs> that's built on international travel with all international travel being shut down. Um, <laughs> yeah it has affected us a good bit. We did have to, um, so, so when, I, when I talked about the three month mentorship that we have overseas, we typically we take a group of students in the spring and then a group in the summer and a group in the fall. And so um, our spring students were overseas uh, when it started happening. So unfortunately we had to bring them home early. 
Um, and then unfortunately we've had to cancel both our summer and our fall programs uh, that the students were going to, to go through. So we still have CAFE 1040. Um, our, our missionaries are still living in some of these places. They're still overseas. Um, but the, the three month mentorship has not been able to happen. Um, so we've, we've been creative with uh, what does it look like to do our work outside of that program. And so there are lots of other ways we can do it, um, especially our stateside team spending a lot of time connecting with young adults and having Bible story or Bible studies connecting, you know, for a virtual coffee um, doing anything we can to help uh, point to God's mission in the world, um, help educate and raise awareness. Even our overseas teams have, have begun getting involved in, in the stateside work as much as they can from over cool. there and helping maybe make some videos or do some teachings, do some trainings. And so, um, yeah, we've had to get creative, but we have certainly carried on and continued in the work uh, that we're doing and really looking forward to spring and seeing the uh, things open up a bit more and be able to resume some of the, the normal programs we run. Of course, we dealt with a lot of the logistical issues that a lot of people have dealt with, trying to figure out uh, the economy and the financial impact and all of, all of those things. And um, certainly have been some difficulties there, but God has been so good, so faithful and pulled us through and we're, we're doing okay now. And uh, I think we're all, we're all excited for things to begin to resume a little bit of normalcy here soon. But really, honestly, Stephanie, one of the things that I've been like, clinging to during this season um, is just the belief that in the midst of all of the difficulties and challenges that we're looking at, um, I just genuinely believe God is up to something um, among the nations right now. And I believe this really is, um, gosh, an important time, uh, even in the history of the world, in terms of the yeah. gospel of Jesus, where uh, I believe people are looking for hope more than ever before. The things, maybe the earthly things that people have been clinging to have been stripped away a little bit and people are hungry um, for the things that really matter. And I think it's an amazing time now to be able to come and share with people the love of Jesus Christ, um, the heart he has for people and the chance to know him um, and have eternal life. So it's a, it's a unique and exciting time on that regard in the midst of a really difficult uh, time for a lot of people. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I love to hear that perspective because I believe it too. I think that it's difficult and we've had to change a lot of things, had to get creative, yet at the same time, right. it makes way for new, new ways of life and new things coming out of that, that it adds some color and some different, you know, variety to, to the life that we live on a daily basis. So not easy, but I'm glad to hear that it sounds like you guys are able to pull through it. You've been able to get creative, had some new w ways of things coming in. I can imagine like videos and stuff coming from overseas, like how much life and excitement and color that actually probably does bring to your work too, that you probably sure. wouldn't have had time for or been able to focus on otherwise. So um, that's right. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Things Good. we wanted to do for a long time, but haven't been able to uh, have the time to do them now. So that's been yeah. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I have one last question. What's one thing that you'd like people to understand about mission work? One thing I would like for people to understand about missions work. Um, I think I would go back, Stephanie, to what we talked about just a little while ago, and that is um, the joy in the work. Oh, yeah. Giving your life to what I would argue is the most important thing in the world, uh, relationship with Jesus. There is nothing greater in this world than getting to be a part um, of not just individual people, but even entire peoples mm -hmm. getting to experience life with Jesus Christ. And so, yes, uh, Stephanie's hard. There's hard work and giving up um, the, the comforts of life that we might be able to experience here in America is really difficult for a lot of people. Um, but the stories when you hear someone who comes to know Jesus for the first time and not, not just a casual, like, Oh, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll read that book or whatever, but someone who has given their life to Jesus Christ for the first time, maybe even in the midst of persecution, knowing their family or friends might be opposed to that. Um, but Jesus has transformed them in such a powerful way where they've experienced the, the joy and the peace and the hope and the life that comes with Christ seeing that happen. Um, Gosh, it's, it's a powerful, beautiful thing. There's so much joy in the work that we do. And so, yes, hardship, yes, trials, yes, tribulations. Um, if you're considering being a missionary, uh, boy, there's a, 
a life of great joy ahead of you. And if you're considering mm -hmm. that, man, we'd love to talk to you at Capitan 40 and help you kind of navigate that journey. Yeah, that's incredible. And I can't completely identify with that feeling and knowing that, but in a small way I can, because I lead um, trips to Haiti and those are short-term mission trips, yeah. but you do get a glimpse of it, I believe, without yeah. having seen the long-term and experienced Absolutely. that. But um, when we're there, that's what I feel like. How could I live my life without doing this? It's um, such a different experience and it is it, it feels like the most important work on earth when you're there right. doing it so i can't imagine right. living day after day and getting to do that and it would be tough i definitely but um worth it i think too so right. that's uh yeah that's a beautiful thing to leave us with or leave me with thinking about um and yeah, so I guess if there's anyone that is thinking about this, we know who to get you in touch with now. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yes. All right. Well, Stephen, that's, I guess, the things on my mind that I wanted to ask you today. Um, thank you so much again for your time. This has been a lot of fun and um, helpful to get a glimpse into the work at Cafe 1040. Of course. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for having me on today. I love the work you're doing with Love Light Stories. We're big fans and uh, wish you the best. Thank you so much. Wow. One of the things that really hit me in that conversation is, again, talking about the idea that these young missionaries are going there to live amongst the people groups for a couple of years before they even start doing the missions work itself. Um, and to me, that's just, it really highlighted how much of a personal commitment it really is, how difficult it must be at times, and yet how much of a joy, and like Stephen said, how much of a just a life purpose um, you find through work like that, and I, I just really like the underlying belief in all of it and it ties me back to this idea of helping without hurting where they're becoming friends they're knowing the community they're not bringing this western mindset and bringing just trying to bring in and force the gospel they're really trying to get to know the local people and assimilate and be friends with them and i think that's to me it paints a beautiful picture of um how how great that is and so anyway this interview was really interesting to me and if you find it interesting and want to share it with someone else please do that and as always if you comment below i would love to respond to you and there will be a video coming out again next tuesday so if you'd like to sign up at lovelightstories.com you can sign up there to receive an email the next time a video comes out and until then i'll be thinking of you praying for our world and we'll see you next time Bye.